Uh, I am going to uh, be doing two, well, two things that have nothing to do with the stream that are sort of interesting. One is, I'm actually going to announce the stream after I started it. Uh, I don't know why, since no one watches it either way, but hey, there you go. And second of all, a little bit of excitement, my blood sugar levels are fine, but uh, if streaming requires a lot of energy, I'm sort of experimenting to see if that's the case. I could go hypoglycemic on the stream, so um, that's something you might want to watch out for. And all of this information, of course, I'm giving before we start the actual stream, uh, so it'll be on the re recording uh, if anyone needs to look at it later on. Uh, and I plan to go for about an hour today instead of the normal, uh, been going closer to two hours, or one and a half hours. I'm going to go closer to try to hit just an hour today. Okay, let me go ahead and announce this stream. And uh, you can see from the, the what we're going to do, but I, I don't want to say anything yet. So, let's go to the three places I'm allowed to advertise. And advertise. No one will watch. No one will come. It's very unexciting. Wow, and one of them, I literally have the last message. So <laughs> basically a repeat of the last message. Woo! I'm awesome. Okay. Alrighty, here we go. OSM. Oh, no, I'm in the wrong one. There's two OSM D, uh, Discord servers, and I'm in the one, I'm in both of them, but the one that actually matters is the, uh, is the world, OSM world, not OSM USA. Okay, now that I've announced it, um, say hello to the one user who's in chat, assuming the, uh, this is accurate. Patter, 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 let's take a look here. Okay, so today what I'm going to do is um, we've been writing a lot of functions that convert between latitude, longitude, and the XYZ coordinate system that's used by um, OpenStreetMaps and currently used by the Google API, though they might be changing that because they have changed the way they, uh, they do some stuff. Um, what I want to do is actually look at some of that code that does that and refactor it because we really should have, like, uh, we shouldn't have to write the formula multiple times. It's not inefficient or anything, it's just sort of not good coding. And in particular, I wanted to make sure that I actually have a function that converts a single point in both directions from the XYZ coordinate system to a latitude longitude and from the longitude latitude system to an XYZ coordinate. So I'm going to go ahead and sort of review my functions here. Uh, we'll start with BC lib staging. So um, I wonder if there's a way to, if there's like something special where I can. Uh, Go to definition, find all references. I don't, this isn't a particularly uh, sophisticated, uh, you know, uh, IDE integrated development environment. It does have some cool features. I don't know if any of them, however, is um, show me a list of my functions. So if you happen to know, and if anyone's watching, tell me, uh, but I'm going to have to do it sort of the manual way for right now. Okay, that's on a long lat just okay. This is something I'm going to do really quickly here, because last time I said, oh, no, actually, this is correct. Sorry, this is actually something totally different. This is actually, um, yeah, that tells you the tiles. <laughs> this tries to find all the tiles within a certain radius of a given point, but we're not interested in that today. We might never be. Create fake slippy tile again. Um, that we're going to look at later. Sphere called XYZ, that is, it's a good function, and it's, it's inverse XYZ to spherical, also a good function, but not quite what we're doing. Uh, lats dist to long range. Some of these functions, by the way, if you're wondering why they look so strange, are coming out of a uh, Mathematica program that I wrote, or actually it's a Perl script and a Mathematica uh, program, that will convert uh, certain functions uh, into different uh, languages, including uh, JavaScript and Python and a bunch of others. Okay, uh, uh, let's see. To orthographic XYZ, again, that's when you make the world look like a sphere, because our eyes have perspective. Slippy decimal, this might be the function, of, oh, let's see. Um, this, by the way, is where the Gudermannian function comes in. Is this what I actually want? Um, yeah, apparently this is the thing I was looking for. So, and it's, we need the, um, 
the flip, which is long enough to slippy decimal. So I'm going to add some more. Um, first of all, I'm going to make this more properly. Um, job. This is really ugly. I don't really like this. Um, and I think the only reason I stole it from Mathematica is because I can use the Gutermannian function, uh, which is a, sort of a clever way of doing... Uh, it, it's not a great, super easy formula. It becomes easier when you do it with Gutermannian. So I might have been hesitant to document it because of this, also because it takes three parameters instead of um, instead of taking... Hello! Hello, Ferdy. Thank you. Nice to see you there. Um, it takes three parameters where most of my functions just take an object that has parameters. So this might be why I was sort of scared to... Um, I yeah, kind of want to rewrite this uh, to, uh, to to not to not look this ugly. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and let's go ahead and Google because we know Google knows everything. Um, and we need it both ways. Convert slippy tile and they're called slippy tiles. I don't know why. To latitude and longitude. And there will be a formula here that probably doesn't use Gutermannian. Um, and it's it's not a hard conversion, and, and it's going to be here. Here we go. Uh, derivation of the name, pseudocode. And there we go. It's going to be both of these directions. Um, here's some pseudocode. Okay. Yeah. This is long lat tile numbers, and this is... And by the way, the arc tan, tan, arc tangent of the hyperbolic sine, is the Gutermannian, which is why I used it. Um, but it's confusing. I don't really like that um, anymore. So, and it's also not in the correct format where I use uh, an object and return coordinates instead of y having three separate parameters. So let's go ahead and copy and paste this code. I think we're good. Um, and we can just put it under our. I think we have a notes thing here that I created. Um, or eh, I can actually just put put it into BC Maps, um, which I'm going to do. And of course, it's not going to work as is. I'm going to have to fix it up a little bit. But that I think I can handle that. Okay, so let's give this function a name. Function lng lat to. Now, one thing you need here is the zoom level because the same lo longitude and latitude is represented in many tiles. And um, it's, for example, it's at the zero level tile. There's a one level tile for it. So we 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 need to specify which zoom level we're looking at to get um, uh, let's see, to x y. And hopefully I'm not using that name already. And I should probably document this. I don't know if this is actually proper JS doc that you have to put a star at the beginning of every line, but whatever. I don't care. Um, latitude, longitude, zoom to um, x, y coordinates for that zoom level. Uh, fractions allowed. And that's going to be important because, um, in fact, we're going to document that a little bit better here. Uh, input object. Um, this might be, this might be too simple, but whatever. Longitude, latitude, and z by the way, in the function name, I'm using camel casing, so the Latin x z are capitalized, but in the parameter, in the object uh, field list, I'm just going to let them use lowercase numbers, lowercase letters. Um, okay. Output object. We'll have x, and we're actually going to return all the things they send us, so they will get the full x, y, and z. Um, x slippy tile x value. Okay, and y will be the slippy tile y value. Fractions okay. And uh, again, if this were uh, equiangular, this would be very simple. Um, but the, the the problem comes we're using Mercator, and I think I've whined about this enough. But I'll just say again, Mercator has some advantages and it has some disadvantages. Um, 
the one reason I've got to use it is because if I want to use OSM slippy tiles or even Google API slippy uh, you know, tiles, you have to do this. Okay, notes. Um, integer values of x mean the um, left side of the, well, the west side of the tile. Integer values of y mean the north side of the tile. Uh, I'm pretty sure, but I'm going to cheat and just look over here real quick. I'm pretty sure the tile numbers as you go west decrease, good, and as you go uh, south, uh, the y values increase. Yeah, good. So the minimum numbers are going to be at the north and west. Now I'm going to add something else here that uh, that I've mentioned before. The the top. Uh, <laughs> If there were no pixelation, this wouldn't be an issue. But because we have the concept of pixels, the first pixel, the top left of the first pixel, so integer x is the top left of the top, top left, do I mean northwest corner of? Yeah, let's say that. Uh, integer x is the west edge of the tile. Uh, let's actually put that over here. Okay, and the, and the thing I'm trying to point out here is the leftmost pixel is not the left edge. It's halfway. The pixel has width, so uh, we have to say like um, first pixel will have x value of integer. Well, let's just call it integer plus one over two fifty six over two. We could just say one over five twelve, but it's clear uh, to say one over two fifty six over uh, 512. Um, and that's because, of course, the, f the first pixel is in the middle of the, uh, the tile that goes from uh, x0, the pixel value 0, which is 0, to the pixel value 1, which is 1 over 256. We're assuming the tiles are 256 by 256. Um, and should I say first pixel, westmost pixels? Because there's more than one. And and I can do this as a separate line. Westmost, uh, northmost pixels will have y value of integer plus nope, I meant integer plus same thing, one over two fifty six. Or two. Uh, this is because our, we're using uh, square slippy tiles. There are other slippy tiles that we're not going to get into right now um, because pixels have non-zero height and width. And that's going to be important. And interestingly, because of Mercator, in the, uh, in the northernmost pixel, in the middle of the pixel won't have a value that's the average of the top and bottom of the pixel. But that's okay. That's not, that's not going to be a huge deal. Okay, so here we go, uh, long latch tile numbers. We, of course, are going to try to be a little bit more clever and see if we can combine all this. 2 to the zoom level, which will be 2 to the object Z. Again, I'm not really into... Oh, I'm sorry. Um, okay, stand by. Let me go over here. Okay. I really don't want to listen to my own stream, but I will do that. This is going to really mess things up, by the way. Okay. I can't hear myself at all. Okay. Oh, there's a delay. I can't hear myself at all. Okay. Oh, there's a delay. Okay, I just... I can't hear myself at all. Okay. Oh. Okay, I just... I can't hear myself at all. Okay.
problem I forgot about is because I'm listening to my own stream, I get echoes. The problem I forgot about is because I'm listening to my own stream, I get echoes. The problem I forgot about is because I'm listening to my own stream, I get echoes. The problem I forgot about is because I'm listening to my own stream, I get echoes. Okay, I just read the phrase. Okay, yeah, I think I think I see. Uh, for some reason, my microphone cable is not working properly. Let's. Uh, I'm gonna take it out and put it back in and hope that fixes it. Okay, I just put it back in. And now, are you hearing it in stereo? Because the stereo experience is really important for streams like this. I say sarcastically. So, d yay! So I need to probably get a new microphone and a new headphone, but for different reasons. Okay, thank you very much. I really appreciate that, and I appreciate that someone's actually watching the stream, because um, I wouldn't. Uh, anyway, sorry, let's get back to what we're doing. Um, so here we're just going to replace N with 2 to the power of the objective zoom, and I forget if uh, this is power in JavaScript. Um, yes, always reboot everything. Um, Okay. I always forget if it's double star or that, um, and I really, well, this is going to take like, no. Oh, come on. I'm pretty sure you can do it with just an operation. Oh, come on. You don't have to use MathPal for this. <sighs> okay, well, I've sort of wanted to do this anyway. I'm going to go to replit and create a um, just a, a, a very small JavaScript replit simply for the purpose of testing code uh, very, very briefly. So we're going to call this the um, Twitch. Oh, no, I'm sorry. We have to choose the, uh, the platform. It will be public. Oh, I didn't name it, so now it's going to have a stupid name. Um... And you know what? Let's be more clever. Let's call it Playground. Okay. And let's do that. And in script.js, we will just have very simply console log 9 cubed. Console log 9. Because some, in, some, in some languages, it means the mod operator. Um, and that is a consistency someone... And in some languages, neither of these will work. Well, that didn't do anything. Hmm. Unless both of these are seriously broken... Because JavaScript has this weird habit of just stopping when it encounters a problem. Okay, but that test... Oh, no, it shouldn't. Wow. Wow, I suck. Okay, now... Any thoughts from the peanut gallery? Meaning the people who are watching? Person, people who are watching? Okay. It should have gotten at least as far as console log test. But, you know what? Don't need no freaking include. So if this works, we can continue. Yep, 
Yep, one of the many reasons to hate JavaScript. Why is the console log function not working? I mean, this is pretty standard stuff. Unless I've broken something at a more fundamental level before the script. But this is their default template stuff. Alright, let me wipe this out in case that's causing a problem. And, wow, nothing! Okay. Uh, you might not be able to see this. I'm going to bring up my own web console. Control shift. Whoa, that's not what I meant to do. Not what I meant to do either. Okay. Um, which is tools, web developer, web console. You probably won't be able to see this. Oh, you actually can. Very nice. Okay. Uh, logging. Oh, wow. So it basically shows up for some freaking reason in my console, even though because of the way Replit works, it's supposed to show up here in this console. I starting to not like Replit that much either. Okay. Alright, so now let's figure out which of these is 9 to the third power, which by the way is 729. See, I'm so smart. I know that. Okay. Okay, so it's the double star. 9 mod 3 is... T that's not actually correct, but it seems like it's the double star that does work for four power. What the hell is this? Oh, because I keep keep forgetting that my Java searches will not show up in a new tab, a new tab automatically. And I keep saying I'm going to fix that setting in the browser, but I'm not. I mean, I haven't, and I probably will never because you... Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, right, because I put all the stuff in lib. Like, what the hell happened to my code? Okay, um, so getting back over here. Um, right, right, concern, okay. Um, so it's 2 to the power of... We're just going to separate out n because it's a little bit... Uh, and then... Lon degree... <laughs> okay... Hmm. Yes, and I'm going to make a note here. I'm a terrible person, but I'm going to do it. Uh, this is one bad habit I have that I, re that I really do need to fix, and which is I don't specify degree. I don't specify units. Um, and really, if I were a better mathematician, I would do this in radians, but that's not going to happen. So one thing I really need to watch out... Is that an uh, N? No, in. Oh, maybe that's just a spot on my screen. There we go. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to try to make it clearer that when you're sending these things, they have to be in degrees. Um, at least it's consistent. Okay. Um, so, of course, for us, this will be the object's LNG value. And the X value is not terribly exciting. Uh, it's basically just... Uh, we, we take the longitude, we make it into a number between 0 and 1, and multiply it by the object's zoom level. So that's not too exciting. The y value is the one that is a little bit tougher because it has the, the math in it. So... Oh, I see why they're doing that now, because we actually do need to put radians in here. Uh, objects... Uh, lat... no, zoom value, that, that's still there times... Okay. This, this is probably what I wanted the good one. I'm going to cut and paste this, but... Um, okay. Alright. You know what? I'm going to add in... If uh, Should I do this? This The problem with this is, is this is a very basic function. I don't want to add too much to it. Um, but... Um, one of the things we can add for them nicely what the the radian values are. No one cares, except I need it in this formula, and I don't want to just provide it for latitude, not longitude. So we're going to pretend this is a feature of the function, which is to provide you with the radian value of what you send in. Now, for this, I actually do have a, a, a nice constant that I have up here somewhere. Um, and I'm pretty sure I call it degree. And I'm pretty sure I didn't put it into this one. This is the same trick Mathematica uses to convert from, um, yeah, constant degree 
equals. Except Mathematica uses all caps. Which apparently I'm not going to do. Okay. Oh, no, they don't. Actually, Mathematica uses this casing as well. All right, so the constant degree is what you would multiply to convert radians to degrees. So you divide it to convert uh, uh, degrees back into radians. And this is just a Mathematica-ism. Um, there's a hundred ways to do this. But let's go ahead and do it this way. Why did I lose my position there? Okay. So, object at rad is going to be this over degree. Right, because I'm going from times degree converts degrees to radians. Oh, I'm sorry. It is going to be times degree. Okay, so we get a little bit of a bonus there. The only problem is we're doing extra work. For this, 136 is the only line where we're doing extra work. We would have to convert latitude to radians anyway. Okay, so... Uh, minus one, and this is of course object lat rad because we're still inside the object. Plus secant of lat rad. Jeez. Over two. And then I'm going to go ahead and return the object. Although I think because we're doing pass by reference, if you'd call this, the object itself would change. So you could just look at the object after you call this. That's probably bad practice. And if someday I want to do this correctly. I could create a new object here instead of returning the one they sent us. Okay. And now we're going to go the other way. And technically, it does this does not include... Uh, you'll not see anything about um, fractional values, but there's no floor or ceiling or anything here. So this is going to give us the fractional values we want. And... Oh... see... It's going to be the same documentation almost exactly, but not e not exactly exactly. So let's go ahead and document it here, and we probably need to give it a name first. Um, it's a feature, not everything. Yes, exactly. Um, okay, so the other one we called, we're just going to reverse the name here. Uh, longitude latitude z to xy, here we're going to go... X, Y, oh. Oh, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I will. It's camel casing. It looks truly bizarre. X, Y, and Z to long lat. And this is one case where camel casing doesn't really help us. But okay. And, okay, so X, Y, Z. Okay, and right, we're, we're going to update the documentation here. Converts x, y, z, slippy tile coordinates to latitude, longitude, fractions allowed. Of course, latitude and longitude can always be fractional. Input object will be... Oh, you know what? I might be able to cheat. Um, so this time the input object will be x, y, slippy tile, and the output object will include the fields for longitude and latitude. Uh, so input object x, y, z. We don't allow fractional zoom levels, although at some point we really would like to, but I discussed that earlier. Uh, having fractional zoom levels would be cool. We don't have it in slippy tiles. We're not going to deal with it right now. Okay, notes. Uh, come on. Be consistent. Okay. So we give x, y, z. We get it in longitude, latitude. Um... Just for fun, the undocumented feature here is you can also get... All right, I'll document it. We're going to go ahead and give them the results in radians as well. Uh, I don't even know if we need to compute it in radians, but it's, it's kind of a nice thing we're doing. Uh, I mean, it's actually making this function have uh, two different uh, purposes, but it's such a minor purpose, I think I'm okay with it. And... Since we're doing that, we should might as well update our original function because it also does give you back Oh no, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's actually the, this does give you back longitude and radians and latitude and radi radians. 
Um, and so, because we're converting that to this is longitude and radian, latitude and radians. This is still true. Westmost pixels have right. So this is actually this note's actually more important to this function because it's telling you if you want to know where the first pixel is, don't send in an integer value of x. Send in an integer value that's plus one over five twelve, one over two six over two, because pixels have non-zero width and height. Okay, so uh, yeah, tile numbers. This is, should not be difficult. Object long, which we're all it's already in degrees for us equals object x over 2 to the object z. I'm relying on order of operations here, so that should be OK. Um, times 360 minus 180. Again, that one's the easy one. Object lat is, I think I'm going to have a problem here, because I just said, um, yeah, log, tan, and seek. But of course, in JavaScript, that's math log, math tan, math. Oh. Okay. I'm going to see if I don't think JavaScript has it. Well, let's find out. Mm -hmm. It might. It's not a hard thing to add if it doesn't. But let's find out. Math seek is not a function. Okay. Okay. I'm going to do something terrible here that I've already done, sort of. Um, I added the Gudermannian function. I might as well add... The secant is just one over the cosine. Um, so, this is probably really bad, so I'm keeping it under the comment that says this is probably really... I'll add the word really, really bad. Um, I don't see why they don't have this function. It's very cheap to add. Um, it doesn't really make anything any worse. So yes, so now this will work because we have math secant. Okay, great. And now going back to this one, object lat equals um, Oh, yes, because once again, if you're going to do math, you have to use radians, so this will give us the radian value of the latitude, uh, which is math arc tan, math sine h. I'm pretty sure we do have a sine h function, a hyperbolic sine. I don't know what this value should be, but it should at least not choke. Yes, I know math is not a function. You just told me that. Cool. The hyperbolic sine of 7 is 548. Hyperbolic sine is like e to the x plus e to the minus x or something. Uh, it's, it's, I'm not going to say any more about it, but that's what it is. Okay, so math of time, math sine, one, 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 y tiles, of course, going to be object y. And n is going to be, once again, I guess computing it only once gives us a very slight advantage that I don't care about. Um... Let me make this a little bit wider. It's still going to be ugly, but oh, actually it's a little bit better. Um, and the problem with um, Replit is if you type one very long line, it'll look like multiple lines, but it, it is still just one line uh, in ter as far as JavaScript is concerned. Okay. So now, and again, they're doing this too, is going to be object that rad. This time I'm converting from radians two degrees. So it's that, and then longitude we already got in degrees, so we're just going to make this object longitude times degree, and then return the object. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to do my little cheating thing here, where you're not really supposed to test inside the uh, inside the the libraries, uh, but I'm a rebel man. And we're not we're not going to keep the tests here, obviously. Um, X Y Z form. What? And this is very basic testing. Obviously, we're not. This is just to make sure it doesn't crash and burn, basically. 
All right, so the X tile of 17, the Y tile of 22, and we need a minimum zoom level of 5, because before zoom level 5, tiles above 16 don't exist. Um, so that does, and I'm guessing it's going to break. I'm guessing I made an error somewhere. Yep. First of all, let's make sure it's not in my test. That would be very bad. Okay. And you'll notice how beautifully the uh, the line number and the uh, place where I've made the mistake are clearly not documented. So let's see if I put too many parentheses on this today. No, I didn't. That's fine. Um, this is a bit stretched out, but shouldn't be an issue. Um, so a clever-ish way of doing this, uh, is commenting out, oh, 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 oh. Well, this is wrong. Yeah, well, this is clearly stupid. So what the hell happened? Let me go back over here. Which one we're doing here? We're going lon lat to the tile names. So, oh, the pi didn't copy over well. That's why. So we're gonna try to fix this now. Um, math seek object lat rand over. I'm pretty sure they define. off by 1. n times 1 minus log of tangent of lat rad oh, um, right, plus secant of lat rad close off We shouldn't need the math pi over here because we're already dealing with radians. So let's see what I how I messed that up. Um, oh no, this is okay. So over pi, close close over two. Oh, do I uh, do I have an extra parentheses at the end? Yes, I do. Hopefully, <laughs> that's what the problem was. And close parentheses, close parentheses. Oh yeah, I do, actually. And I actually don't need the parentheses around two obz because it, the order of operations would do that first anyway. Anyway, so let's see what this does. Yep, didn't like it. And that's because, of course, I copied a line that I shouldn't have. Wow, don't do that. Copied something I shouldn't have copied. Okay, so we're going to get rid of this line, and hopefully this will be all nice now. Now I'm going to see why I did the Gudermannian because this is just such a pain to write this out. Well, getting better. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, talk to you later, or not? It's up to you. Uh, Let's so see. Does this help? Now, is it an obj y? Let's see. Oh. So the problem isn't necessarily here. And you know what? This, did I do that as math degree? Uh, no, I just called it degree. Um, debugging, it's the funnest part of programming. Okay, but we're getting a different error, which is always sort of a good thing. So let's comment out this line. Of course, if we want to be smart about this, we would comment out like by you know like we would do like a binary search. 
So we would first comment out like this whole function. Okay. And I just realized that was pointless because we're testing the other one. But you know, whatever. Okay. All right, so now let's con convert out uh, this function here. Um, yeah, let's just comment it out one line at a time. Of course, it might be occurring in more than one line, which is just even worse, but you know. Let's see if this does it. Okay, so the problem is in here somewhere. I almost suspect it's in this line because I'm doing a little bit of funky stuff there. Is it in this line? Yes, it is. All right. So the uh, latitude and radians is math arc time, math sine h of wow. Yeah, that that's not going to work. I think that's a pi, but let's double check. Yep. So math. See if that works. All right, and maybe it would be helpful if we actually logged it. So before we log it, let's see where I sort of expect it to be. Uh, with the slippy tile level five, we have 32 tiles in each direction. 17 will put it just east of the prime meridian. 22 will put it uh, a little bit below the uh, equator. And let me see if I'm actually talking to anyone. Well, Zinto, if you're still there, hi there. If you're not still there, hi there anyway. All right, so, nope, because I, this is just, I might have to do something about it. I might have to alias that function. Math arc 10 is not a function. Of course it's not. Why would it be? Is it a 10? And again, I could go to my little test thingy, but yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I don't know why JavaScript... JavaScript pretty much hates us. And you know what? I'm going to fix JavaScript a little bit more here. Um, wait, there is an ATAN. I'm sorry, arc 10 is what I was saying. Arc 10. This is a way to alias, hopefully, alias a function in JavaScript because you're just assigning one function to another. Um, this is bad practice, but I'm going to test it real quick. You should use a 10 because so arc 10, run, same result. Back to a 10. So you can do that, and uh, there was some, one other one which I, I did seek it already, but there was one other one I wanted to do this for, and I can't remember what it was. Um, if I remembered, I'll go ahead and alias that too, because um, there was another case where that happened. Okay, so longitude 11.25 seems reasonable. Latitude of minus, oh, whoa, 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 I didn't, uh, okay, that's fine. Uh, latitude of minus 55 seems a little bit low. 22. But then again, um, actually, it is really low. Uh, of course, Mercator is stretched out a bit, so you wouldn't necessarily expect this to be. Uh, but let's see if we put in 16, we should get zero, and if we don't, something's wrong. Oh, okay. 17, I guess. It's not an even progression down, unfortunately. So the first one's going to take us 11 degrees down, but the second one's going to take us more down. And that, again, is because uh, Mercator stretches stuff. 20, that's still not too bad, actually. Why do we, why do we get 31? So we're going about 10 degrees a shot. Um, okay. And it might just be because when we get to, like, 31, it's going to be very close to the South Pole. A minus, that's not that close, actually. Sorry, very close to the limits of a Mercator map, in this case, which is minus 85. But anyway, it looks like it's working fine. Uh, that does look like a uh, 57 degrees is one radian, so 1.5 radians. Is, that looks okay. 11.25 um, degrees would be about a fourth. Yeah, that looks okay. All right, so it looks like these functions are at least, in a very preliminary sense, working. 
now some of you might say, hey, we haven't actually accomplished anything because we already had formulas to do this stuff for us. Um, so you're right, we haven't accomplished anything. Um, and it took us 45 minutes to do that. But now I'd like to rewrite some of the functions, um, which is also going to accomplish nothing, by the way, uh, that uh, convert uh, between the two coordinate systems. And um, I should feel bad about that, but I don't. Okay. Uh, this one we don't need to convert because we're not going to use it. Create fake slippy tile. Let's see. Yeah, I do need to unify. So this is just going to create the fake slippy tile, and this one I think can use some of the other, um, we don't need this debugging statement here anymore. Tile to, okay. So tile to longitude latitude is the one that really should be using. Um, and hey, this is one, one place where I can use the go to definition. Okay, so it can only find definitions in the same, in the same file. Oh well. I might just get tired, by the way, of uh, re, re, uh, refactoring. All right, so tile the long. Yeah. Wait. Okay, this is actually for something that's not... Some of the images I have are not a perfect um, power of two in both directions. This does some magic for them, but the it's not the magic we want. It's not the thing we need to change. Uh, I'm getting border, getting border. Wait, what the hell? Um, yeah, this is this is crap for right now. Oh wait, is this actually... No, this converts the whole tile. And this is where we could actually use um, the um, tiles along that. So here we could just say the, um, the object's longitude. Plus, and here's where we could actually use that uh, the, these other functions to do this work for us. So, um, and you can actually see we have the same sort of thing. So the longitude here is going to be, we want to take the um, tile values, which are x, y, z, to long. You know what? I'm not going to change this. Um, I'm going to leave it the way it is because it does work. Um, now we're going to go back and try to actually do something interesting, uh, which was what we were talking about earlier, which is the uh, buffer. And we have uh, done this buffer tile. Have we? Okay. Um, oh, right, we were in the middle of doing this, and we're going to continue now. So what this currently does is it... <coughs> excuse me. Um, okay, and this is where we don't really need the full power of tile to that long. That we just we're converting one point, which is the each pixel, each of the sixty-five thousand pixels individually. Uh, so what we actually need here is the um, x, y, z, because that's what we have. I think yeah, two long lat where x is going to be the object x plus I'm going to tighten this up a little bit and we are going to format this a little bit nicer okay x object z a and this is wow I don't know why the hell this happened okay um I mean, we don't want to make it too, we don't have to make it too compact, but this might be a bit. Okay. Yeah, 
So NZ is... And the we don't need projection one because this is going to be assumed Mercator. That's one of the nice things we get out of this is uh, my hideous experiment with equiangular uh, doesn't need to be there. Okay. And just to make sure we got it, that this is there's going to be a lot more data here because the uh, x y z to long lat function computes other stuff. Let's do this. See what happens. Um, except to do that, we need to do a uh, Did I have? I had a buffer console log in here. Actually, we don't even need a console log because... Oh, fooiness. Okay. And we can do this because I hope JavaScript hoists. Or actually, I think we're doing the includes, so we're fine. Um, buffer tile... Okay, so let's we won't say we want to buffer the tile x17, y23, z5, which this tile does exist, and did I actually put an input object here? Wow, okay. Um, returns a pin image, the xyz information about the... we don't need that. Um, okay, so maybe I haven't finished documenting this. Input object. X, Y, and Z parameters of the tile. Extra params, definitely we need that. Um, oh, I wish I were smart. Okay. So the latitude and longitude, the, we don't need information about that. We can compute ourselves. And we do need a color function, which is because we need to paint this. And we need to know how to paint this. Okay. So we the tile that we're talking about, the point from which we're measuring distance, and uh, the color function, which tells us once we've measured the distance, how to convert that distance into a color. So we're pretty solid there. And um, this was all old code. Sorry, I can't see that. This was all old code from a uh, buffer that we're going to sort of incorporate into this new code as we understand it. Okay, so what this does is... Well, let's run this and see if, what this does. Nice. Okay, good deal. So, yes. So the x and y values, of course, the x value, this is probably closer to the rightmost pixel and the lowest pixel. Uh, we get the longitude, latitude, and the radian values, which we're not going to use. Um, so, of course, now that we have this, the question is, what do we need next? Well, we're drawing a buffer, so we need to know the distance between this and the target point. And our test doesn't have the target point, so we should probably put that in there. It also doesn't have a color function, but we'll worry about that in just a sec. Um, the longitude of minus, well, let's make it close to where I am, and the latitude of 35. And again, oh, 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 oh yeah, in degrees. Um, yeah. And we still don't have a color function, but we're not going to use it, so we're fine. All right, so we have lunch. How do we measure the distance? Come on, this is, shouldn't be, this should be over here. Okay. So now over here, we did a function called grid to distances, where we basically gave it a big grid, and it computed the distances for everything in that grid. We're not going to do that here, because I think grid to distances doesn't actually... Go to definition, it's not going to be here. But we are going to look at the code to see how we did it, and it's not that hard, actually. I'm pretty sure that... Uh, grid to distances... Now let's see if I can go to definition. This would be cool if this never works, because it's, they're always in the wrong file. Yay! To turn the target distance, longitude, latitude, grid boundaries, computing grid circle distance for a grid can be sped up a lot, either by caching or by noting there are formulas that make it easier. 
Oh, that's not very promising. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Isn't this gorgeous? I'm using a library called Turf, which I don't know how the hell I did I include it. I must have, right? Well, somehow magically it got Turf working. And Turf is a library that lets you compute uh, distances between latitudes and longitudes easier. Uh, we're not going to use it because it's not really that hard. So to get the distances, and again, we should create a function for this ourselves. Isn't it nice the way we keep creating functions? But actually, um, this is actually this is actually a pretty good function to have around. Um, let me quickly check to see if anyone has already done it. Oh fuck! Did it again. Always create a new tab before doing this. Um, it's not hard. I mean, okay, really, someone actually managed to write JavaScript with Greek characters in it. Really, 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 and maybe that does work. Um, that's the number, that's the uh, size of the Earth. Um, yeah. I'm not going to do that. Okay. So now we're going to write a function down here. And I'm going to specify units. Well, um, I hate to say lat one, lat two, but I don't see another way of doing it because you have to somehow separate the objects. You could actually do something cool and give a whole like an array of objects and give the distance between any two of them. And I actually do that in one of the Perl scripts I've written. Uh, but for here, we're just going to say. Longitude and latitude of first of first point. Longitude and latitude of second point. Return object. Um We're going to try to be nice here for uh, people who live in Europe. Uh, oh, you know what? We're going to be really ugly here. It turns out, because of the way we're doing, because we're doing everything with like spheres and stuff. This can be the distance in radians. Radians are a, a, a measure. Uh, they're usually used to measure angles, but actually, like, if you have a pure unit circle, its its circumference is 2 pi, and that 2 pi is a pure number, but it's really in radians. We're, that's because we're using radians to measure the angle. Radians is actually a unitless, uh, unitless thing itself, so it's uh, pretty ugly. Um, and I will call this, as I have before, GC, the great circle distance, uh, which is, of course, the distance we use. And now, I'm going to look up the Haversine formula, because that is the one we want. We're going to have to modify it a little bit. And the generic is actually, um, oh yes, thank you for putting Greek letters in there. Um, and let's add the Haversine formula to the math library because we have nothing better to do with our lives. Oh, nice. These aren't even cut and pasteable. Gorgeous. Uh, Do 
Do I care? God damn it, this is annoying. Um. And the only reason I'm doing this is because it's cut and pasteable. Um. And so this is actually what we want here, this crap here, but I want to be obnoxious. Oh, this is going to be the Haversign formula, not the actual definition of Haversign. So what I want is Haversign function in JavaScript, because I want to be clever as possible. That's a complete loop. Very nice. All right, let's just go ahead and do this. Um, one minus cosine theta over two. It's not that difficult to remember. Is there a? Yeah, have appears to be a, a accepted abbreviation. Okay, let me make sure that's 1 minus cosine over 2. And it, that is, we don't want to square because that takes up more, uh, that's less efficient. Okay, and so now the great circle distance we can write slightly easier because of that Haversine function. And by the way, if I ever do get dinged for doing this, I would create a separate math object for myself and define the functions there. So that would still be legit. I could still use it because I could then call my own math object. Uh, and uh, and do that. Okay, so with the Haversine formula, could be directly from latitude and longitude two points. The central angle, and that, by the way, the central angle is the radian measure that I was talking about, and we can convert that really easily to the to the to other stuff. So it's Haversine of the difference between the two. It doesn't actually matter, by the way. Um, I'm pretty sure the Haversine formula is even because cosine of negative theta is cosine of positive theta. So Haversine of the differences of the latitudes. Um, yeah. Plus cosine of product of latitudes times the Haversine of the difference in the longitudes. I'm going to test this a little bit because I'm a little bit worried. So this is going to be... Um, and already, I have forgotten to put in degrees. And so, of course, oh, this is going to be ugly. This is going to be ugly. It looks like this is this is gonna be redundant code, which I hate. I wonder if there's a better way of doing this. I, um, I suppose I could create an array, apply this function to every member of the array, and then use the JavaScript assign thing to assign it to these numbers. I don't think that's that much better than what I'm doing. So that one, so let's check to make sure that's all right. Lon one, lon one, lon two, lat, lat, lat one, lat two, degree conversion, we're good. Okay. So now I've gotten the Haversine formula again. Um, Haversine of the... Oh, holy crap, then we need the inverse Haversine, don't we?
Well, now I'm turned off. I'm going to just use the regular formula. Um, um, can't be this complicated. I've seen it before. Actually, I've done it in Perl, so let me take a quick look at my Perl code. And you can look at it, too. That's how exciting this is going to be, because it's in Git. And I'm certainly hoping to hell I actually have... Let me actually check to see that I do have the GC... It might not be as easy as I thought, but I could have sworn it was. Oh! It's not that easy. But let's go ahead and take a look at it anyway. I love looking at my own code. Actually, I don't. It's pretty ugly. Okay. Um, so I'm using... Apparently I'm using something I actually have here. And it isn't that easy, because apparently I go through a whole bunch of uh, gyrations to get it. So let's go ahead and cu cut and paste this code. We can't use it, obviously. Um, wow. So this basically converts everything to radians. And I think this should be fine. Okay, so we're going to say screw... We're going to leave it in there in the math thing, but okay. So, uh, So I hate creating temporary variables, but, you know. And so what are x, y... x, y, u, v... Um... Okay. Latitude, longitude. Oh, god damn it, I've got these backwards. Uh, latitude, longitude, x, y, and then latitude. So x and u are the latitudes, y and v are the longitudes. And this just actually appears to be a cosine of all four of them regardless. Okay. Man, this is ugly. I'm not actually happy with this. And th I know there's a better way of doing this. So let me think real quick. Um, if we convert these both to vector coordinates, x, y, z coordinates, and take the dot product um, of those two vectors, it will give us the cosine of the angle between the two vectors. I don't know if that's any easier, but that's sort of a... that's how I would do it mathematically. Uh, is And that would give us the radian uh, degrees between the two. But, you know what, I think I have annoyed people enough. I've been streaming for one hour, eight minutes. I said I'm going to call it one hour, so I'm going to go ahead and call it now. Uh, thank you for joining my stream, and... let me see if anyone's actually here. Oh, wow. No, lurks... I'm pretty sure it doesn't exist. And Notice 30, which also sounds like a suspicious name, but hopefully is not. Okay, guys, thank you very much for watching me stream. We'll pick this up later, maybe, or I'll die. Who knows? Because I'm pretty old. All right, bye for now.